Romans 12 and 12, rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Always pray. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. I also want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word and sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, I'm the brother Tazer War from the GMS New Jersey camp. And uh, this topic is going to be, you know, based around precepts on the topic of praying. All right. And uh, it's a must that we pray to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. We don't pray unto man. We don't pray unto idols. We pray, okay, to the to what you will call the invisible power, which is Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Now, first off, Yahweh is the Father's name, which means He is or He to be, and Yahweh Shai means He deliverer, He savior. All right, so we so we pray to Yahweh Bahashem, which Bahashem is Hebrew for in the name. All right, Yahweh Shai. So you're saying. The Father in the name of the Son, all right, the Savior, Yahweh Shai, all right, so, you know, it's a must that brothers pray, you know, if you're not in prayer, then you're not in the truth, you know, I'm going to say it just like that, because men of the Lord, they always pray, you know, and uh, especially in the time and season in which we're living in, it's a lot of pestilences, diseases going on, and you have, um, you know, all of these uh, prophecies in which the Lord is hap making happen in the earth, you know, going on in the world. You know, what other man of person are we to be? All right. In all holy conversation and godliness, you know, and it's godliness to pray. You know, we need a savior. We need a we need a healer. And that is Yahweh Shai. All right. So for those who have an ear to hear, let them hear. Who, those who forbear, you know, move on. All right, these shows is for the whole four elect. Now, the first scripture I have here, like I said, this is just precepts that I put together, not particularly in order, you know, so I'm just going to read through them. This is Romans chapter 12, verse 12. It says rejoicing in hope, you know, hope. It says pa patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. So we supposed to always continue, you know, in prayer, you know. You know, why do you pray? You pray because you need help. Why do you pray? You pray because you want to grow in this thing. You know, you want to endure, you know. You're supposed to have a relationship with the Heavenly Father, you know, that you build upon through your through your praying, all right? And uh, sometimes we do quick prayers, you know, you put up, you might be somewhere out and about or, you know, or you might meditate, you know. You might even, you know, sit down and, you know, meditate and, you know, think on the things that's going on in your life and things you, you might need and things you might want, you know, uh, you know, so you, you talk to the most high. All right. The Lord hears everything. He knows everything. All right. It says first Thessalonians 5 and 16, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. All right. So you're not supposed to get tired in praying. Now, that don't mean you got to sit down and pray like the Muslims and pray three times a day because it's not ordered by the Lord to pray three times a day. The Lord said pray without ceasing. So it doesn't matter how many times you pray a day. All right. Because in the Quran, they teach you that I think they got to pray three times a day is such a thing, you know, in the afternoon, morning, night, whatever, whatever they do it. But um, there is cases where uh, Daniel, I believe he prayed three times because he wanted the answer from the Lord. He wanted the Lord to respond, you know, so you might even fast. Fasting is uh, also godly, you know, in a way that, you know, you can um, get prayers answered, you know, by Yahweh Barsham, Yahweh Shai. All right. So it says, pray without ceasing and everything give thanks, you know, because you're supposed to be thankful, man. If you're not thankful for uh, your situation and what you have, you know, and what you're going through, then you're ungrateful, all right? You're ungrateful, and it's a must that you read the scriptures so that you can have understanding, you know, as far as your situation. You know, you can have understanding of why 
certain things happen, you know? So that what? In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of the Most High in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, concerning you. Quince not the spirit. Now, we're set up as prophets, you know, which word prophet means to say before. And we, we, we watchmen. We also set up as watchmen. You know, we report. You know, we, uh, as Habakkuk said, we uh, wait to see what the Lord is going to say unto us. And then we prophesy and we teach. So you're not supposed to quench the spirit. You know, you're not supposed to, you know, put out your fire, so to say. All right. Because if you do that, you know, then the most high will screw you out. Scriptures say be not uh, lukewarm. All right. You know, don't be in between. Either be on fire or, you know, be missile food. All right. It says despise not the prophesizing. All right. The prophesizing is the um, is, uh, you know, the, the events that happen, which the Lord said was going to happen. You know, so despise not the prophesizing, despise not the speaking, the teaching. And um, as I was watching Elder Apostle Tahar's video, he may mention on these other Israelites out there in these different camps, they actually shine away from prophesizing. Because in this age, they believe that, well, in this season, they believe that, you know, there's so many other things to do as an Hebrew Israelite, you know, to get themselves involved with this society. All right. You know, but guess what? If you're a messenger of the Lord, you're not going to get involved with this society. You're not going to build upon this society. What What is the uh, one of the things the Lord said himself? All right. Yahweh Shah. He said the fashion of this world shall pass away. All right. So verse 21, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. What is good? All right. Keeping the ordinance in the obedience and discipline in Yahweh Barashim Yahweh Shah. And this truth, all right, which you was taught, you know, practicing the holy days and being brotherly, charitable among your brethren, you know, um, you know, constantly doing what the Lord's will is. So it says, prove all things. We do that by bringing out the scriptures. Hold fast that which is good. So you're supposed to hold tight in what you learn, you know, not getting tired, getting weak, you know, thinking that, you know, all these other camps doing it. You know, we need to grow. We need to build on this society and all that. No, man. Hold fast, which is good. Hold fast that which is good. It says, abstain from all appearance of evil and they, and the very power of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray the most high your whole spirit and your soul body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. So it's all about being blameless. At the end of the day, it's all about being blameless because our main goal, okay, I'm going to say the elect's goal is to see salvation if the Lord's willing. If they be a part of that that uh, number of the elect, then guess what? They're going to be found blameless, okay? You know, the world is uh, full of sin and the most high is judging this earth for his sins, but the men, you know, few women, children that are as part of that elect, they're going to be found blameless in the Lord. All right. They're not going to have sins covering them. All right. So it says faithful is he that call of you who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. So you got to pray for your brethren. You got to pray for the men who you labor with. Pray for the apostles who, who taught you this truth. You know, pray for the other, the brothers that's scattered, that's out there putting their lives up on the line. You know, pray, pray for the hopeful elect. Don't pray for the wicked, but pray for the elect, man. Pray for those who's teaching you this truth, 100% truth. All right. It says, uh, next scripture is Philippians 4 and 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto the Most High. So be careful in nothing. There's nothing that, you know, you can't ask of the Lord, you know, but use wisdom, you know, be wise, ask for spiritual things. Don't, you know, ask for carnal things because the Lord, scriptures say he looked within the inward part of man. So the Lord knows what your hearts desire. He knows what you're fleshly lusting for. He knows what you're spiritually looking for. All right. 
So it says, be careful for nothing. All right. Because there's nothing impossible to our power, to our God. All right. Which is the God of Israel. Yahweh. All right. Bahashim Yahweh Shai. It says, but in everything by prayer and supplication. All right. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto Yahweh. All right. So by prayer, that's how, you know, things uh, uh, happen in your life. You know, things that go your way, I should say. You know, the Lord said also in the precept, he said, uh, you receive not because you ask not. All right. So a lot of times you're not receiving what you want because you're not asking, you know. And I remember this years ago, Elder Apostle Gabar, you know, he did a video sort of like this. And uh, it was very edifying, you know, and it stuck with me. You know, when we praying, you know, we're building a relationship with the Lord. You got to build your own personal relationship because there's no man that can save you. All right. You got Jake out here and these government churches. All right. And they, they, they're they ignorant to the most High's righteousness where they go establish their own righteousness. All right. But not according to the word, as Paul said, Romans, the 10th chapter, they're ignorant of the most High's righteousness, man. All right. You don't want to be like them. They, they the, the famous lines are God knows my heart. All right. You know, like the Lord is uh, pacified for their sins. No, the Lord is going to judge them for their sins, man. All right. So it says, um, but in everything by prayer and supplication, and I believe that word supplication basically means to beg. All right, I'm going to just do a quick Google search. Real quick. Come back to that. I could go to the blue letter, but let's just see what Google say. Supplication. It says the action of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. And that word earnestly means seriously. You know, you're, you're praying to the Lord seriously, you know, and humbly, you know. All right. Humbly, you know. But when you go into the Hebrew, all right, the Hebrew tongue, you know, is really... um. It's, it's with more force than this bastard tongue that we speak in these languages as in English, you know, because English is a bastard tongue. But in the Hebrew, it's more power because things that when you say words in Hebrew, like if you which I probably read this Hebrew prayer, you know, when you say things in Hebrew is more direct. Today, it would seem as though you're being rude if you're direct using the Hebrew tongue when you compare it, you know, comparing the uh, emotions and feminine nature today, this society compared to the ancient customs in our language, our ancient language of Hebrew, you know, Hebrew is a lot more rough. It's a lot more direct, you know? So, you know, maybe I'll get there in a few precepts that come up to speak on, speak more on that, you know? Because uh, it says humbly, you know, a lot of the way you taught today and how to pray, you watch TV, you go to your local uh, government churches, being the Baptist, you know, Pentecost and Jesus Christ, that feminine type of nature and the false, false way of teaching. All right. Really is uh, plantation doctrine that actually uh, was put upon us through slavery. You know, they teach you how to pray in the wrong way. All right. But this lesson is to teach you how to pray in the right way. All right. And you got to get that feminine nature out of your mind, man. All right, we're humble because we're low, okay? And we need a savior. But we also, in a sort of way, we're demanding, okay? We're demanding the Lord to uh, help us, you know? So let me get back. All right, this is uh, back, it was Ephesians 6 and 4 and 6. So let's go to Ephesians 6 and 16. That was Philippians 4 and 6. Excuse me. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let us let your requests be made known unto the Most High. So in order to receive, you have to ask, man. In order to receive, you have to ask. And sometimes it, it don't, you, you, you know, the Lord may not answer on your first ask, on your first, you know, calling. You might got to fast. You might have to constantly, consistently you know, beat upon the Lord's eardrum, so, you know, sort of say, 
you know, constantly bugging, begging the Lord. You know, that's actually um, demonstrated in the parable of uh, uh, what's that? Luke 18 chapter when Yahweh Shai said the, um, the wicked ruler, the wicked judge, you know, when the woman were begging him to, to help. You know, I can get it, but I have a lot of precepts here. So you can grab that yourself and read it. That's Luke, the 18th chapter. All right. Matter of fact, let me make sure. It's locked here. So I don't want to do no editing and make no mistakes. Stay you the wrong way. This is Luke 18. Yeah. You know, Luke 18. I read it anyway. Luke 18 and 2. Uh, one. And he spake the parable unto them to this end. That men ought to always to pray. Right. So, yeah, I have to read this. That men ought always to pray. Now, this is Yahweh Shai speaking. Okay. And and not to faint. It's a must. You always pray. So, brothers, pray. You know, if you're not praying, pray. You need to pick it up. It says, saying, there was in the city a judge which feared not the Most High, neither regarded men. So, this was a judge Okay, according to this parable, he was a, a snobby, you know, little, he was a snobby, uh, uh, prideful man, prideful judge, right? Because he didn't fear the most high and neither did he fear any man, right? Verse three, and there was a widow in that city and she came unto him saying, avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not the most high, nor regard man, yet because this widow trouble with me, I will avenge her, least by her continued coming she weary me. All right? <laughs> so when you bugging someone, whether he, even if he's a, you know, when you, you could bug a wicked man, a wicked, uh, like your boss, you bugging him, bugging him for a raise. Eventually he may just give it to you because he's tired of you coming to him, you know? So it says, and the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge say, and shall not the most high avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. And why is that? Because faith is only given to a remnant, which is a very small number of the Israelites. You know, when you check out uh, when the Lord spoke about this in Zechariah 13.89, or is it Zephaniah 89, whatever, it's like it. not whatever, but it's, I believe it's Zechariah 13.89, either which one. I'm not going to grab it. You should look it up. But um, I know it's 13.89, right? When you look at that number of the two thirds, that is damn near that pie chart. That is all. That's almost all of the tribes of, and people of Israel, of the Lord's people. Okay. But that one third is a very small number. All right. The 144,000, which consists of just men. All right. Is a very small number compared to the whole ordeal of the Israelites in whole. All right. And remember, the Lord said that we're scattered through the four corners of the earth. All right. So anyway, with that being said, let's go back. Uh I believe Ephesians chapter 6 and 16, it says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, what is the shield of faith? The shield of faith is this word. The shield of faith is the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Because once you receive that and you understand this book through, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and through his teachings and gospel, then now you can put on the shield of faith. You can wear that shield. You know, you know all of the trickeries of Satan. Uh, the scriptures say we're not ignorant of Satan devices. So it says, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked. So whatever which way Satan come, you throw up your shield of faith. All right. And trust me, <laughs> they come. You got scoffers take delight in their scorning. You got Esau continuing constantly to lie. You know, he bring his minions up to slander us. You know, um, you know, hey, Satan comes like a roaring lion, man. And he comes with those fiery darts. All right. But we know how to quince it. Do what? The shield of faith. And that's through the name. Because the name itself is a shield, man. 
All right. The scriptures say the uh, name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run over to it and they are safe. All right. So just by using that name, Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh is a shield, man. All right. So verse 17 and take the helmet of salvation. Same thing. All right. Which is that crown. OK. The spirit, the gospel, it says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of the most high. Now it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So you can't be just saying, you know, oh, uh, yeah, if you could do that. You know, you got to pray in the spirit, man. The Lord knows your effort. He know how uh, how much you strive. He know if you what you really mean. He know what you don't really mean. He know that you're just saying shit. You know, you're not even really taking heed of what you're saying. You're just saying it. <laughs> you can't be like that, man. You got to really be in the spirit, man. You got to really believe in the Lord, man. Praying always with praying always with all prayer and supplication. They go that begging again. All right. That humbleness. Right. And the spirit. What is the spirit? The Rakakwadash, which means spirit, holy, holy spirit. All right. You know, and what that means, how you be in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, first off, have to give you the Holy Spirit. And that's by knowing his word. You know, the scriptures say in Second Peter's, I believe the third chapter, he says his ears are open into the prayers of the righteous. All right. And I'm roughly paraphrasing that his ears are open to the to the prayers of the righteous, not the wicked. And why is that? Because the righteous know how to pray. Matter of fact, King David, you know, is a prime example of uh of of one who was beloved of the heavenly father you know that taught us and we still use you know his songs which were prophecies some of them you know and it was praying you know he went through ups and downs he was rejoicing he was also down and out so king david also reading the book of psalms teaches you how to pray king david was a great prayer to the lord you know dealing with supplication begging you know, being humble, it says, and he was also doing it in the spirit, in the Rakakwadash, the Holy Spirit. He knew how to, uh, you know, um, get the Lord to uh, to favor him, man. You know, and that's something we all have to pick up through our trials and errors, because David went through a lot of trials and errors, and that's what the experience gave him and how to talk to the Lord, man. And the Lord did say he was, that's, he's the apple of my eye. All right. So David is a great example. Now it says, um, and sub, uh, pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perverseness, uh, preserve, uh, yeah, pres preservance and supplication for all saints. All right. And all saints is the Israelites. It says verse 19. And for me, that utterance may to uh, slack you. And for me, that Utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel. So in order to even, you know, retain and and uh, have and to eat, you know, these scriptures, these breakdowns that the apostles broke down, you know, and brothers, you know, brothers get into it and break it down. You know, these mysteries. OK, you got to pray for it. You know, it's not just going to be handed to you. We've seen a lot of men who swallow, you know, a lot of honey, you know, because the scriptures consider honey as well. You know, a lot of men, wicked men, swallowed honey down fast and they became what? Great teachers. They was admired by a lot of people. But then look, look at them. You know, certain guys fell out. Certain guys got seduced in the spirit by demons. Now some guys ain't nowhere to be found or they was started teaching a uh, false doctrine, became a false prophet. So you got to pray. You know, and pray for balance in this truth and that the Lord feed you with with how much you can digest. You know, don't try to stuff your mouth, man. You know, seeking out things too hard for thee. But anyway, Matthew 6 and 6. Now it says, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret. And thy father would see if in secret shall reward thee openly. So the scriptures tell us to pray in secret, man. All right. Now you have these government churches, Baptist, Pentecost, Jehovah's Wickedness. You know, a lot of them in those churches, they pray together. 
They go, you know, oh, what's that? The Catholic, they go before a man and they tell a man all his sins. That's off, off. That is off, all right? That is not the right way to pray. You're supposed to pray in secret to the Most High. And the Lord Yahweh Shai is teaching you how to pray here, you know, because like he said, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, meaning going somewhere where it's a closed room, you know, if you're going to speak it out loud, you want to have a moment to yourself, you want to meditate, go do that alone, you know, don't go do it in front of people, don't do it because you want people to hear you, you know, the Lord look with those things, he looks for what, the sincerity of a man, so it says, when thou hast shut thou door, pray to thou father, which is in secret. And thou father would see if in secret shall reward thee openly. You know? Verse 7. But when ye pray, use not vain repetition. As the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. And that, you know, <laughs> reminds me of Islam. That Muslim. When you see the Muslims pray. You know, they always, you know, they, they start, they're saying all these words because they feel like they got to recite all these words like that. You know, when our Heavenly Father don't want to hear all that, he don't want to hear your vain, your vain repetition, man. Okay. You know what? Don't do what the heathens do. Matter of fact, what's that Jeremiah 10 chapter? Be not, dis, uh, be not like the heathens, you know. I know that gets into being dismayed at the signs in heaven. Don't, don't act like them, man. Don't worship these idols, man. You know, it says, for they think that they should be heard for much, for their much speaking. So it's not about how much you say, you know. <laughs> it says, be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. You see? After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which is art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thou will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. All right. Let me make a say something real quick on this. Because when the Lord said in verse 10, thou kingdom come, thou will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. So just know that, you know, these people in these churches, they're praying to Jesus Christ and they may say this prayer, but they don't even know what they're praying for. You know, you're actually praying that the order that it is up in heaven right now in the fourth dimension with the spirit room, with the Lord reside, the heavenly father and his son and his spirits. The way that it is up there, you're asking for this place on earth to be that way. All right, because uh, excuse me, because kingdom, the kingdom of heaven is not somewhere out of space. All right, it's gonna actually be here on earth when Jacob, you know, uh, rule through Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai after this devil fall, which is Esau. So what you're saying is, Thou kingdom come, Thou will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So you're basically asking for the Lord to bring the order which He established, His laws, I must say his statutes and commandments to be here in earth. So basically when people, they don't read the scriptures and they praying and they go to church, they don't know what they're doing. That's why Paul said they are ignorant of the most high's righteousness. They don't even know what they're saying. So it says, thou kingdom come, thou will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. It says, For if ye forgive their you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. And these are brothers who in the truth. Alright? You know, you may brother may offend you, man. Brother may go off, you know, and if that brother asks for your forgiveness. Because he confronts him, you know, go to him as a man and y'all speak on y'all one on one. And the brother is a brother that's, uh, uh, you know, in the right spirit and asks for your forgiveness. You're supposed to forgive him. You know, you're supposed to pray, you know, to the Lord to forgive the men that trespassed against you, you know, so that the Lord can forgive your trespass. We're not perfect. None of us are perfect. You know, sometimes you perceive wrong things. 
And that's why it's not good to be really perceiving things and thinking things on certain men when you don't know them. You know, just let it be, you know, because Satan will get you and you're supposed to pray. All right. Colossians 4 and 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. With who praying also for us, for the Most High would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mysteries of Yahweh Shai, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. You know, so you got to pray for the brothers, man. Pray that the brothers and you can't even get this more understanding of the truth, being able to speak. Brother may have a trouble speaking. Pray for that brother, you know, so that he can speak the words. You know, so that the Lord can do what? He can manifest it as a brother, as, as the brother speaking. And that happens a lot in camp. And I know, Shar, if you, if you see this video, I know you can relate because that brother knows, you know, he brought it to my attention years ago. Every time we in camp and we speaking on something, the Lord manifests it right before our eyes. And we look at each other and we say the same thing. That's the Lord. You know, and I've been going on for years. So it's a it's a must that you pray for your brother, you know. <laughs> All right, this is Romans 8 and 26. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Right, because sometimes we, we don't know what the Lord got in, in, in state for us. We don't know what he has planned for us tomorrow. You know, next day you wake up and you go to work or whatever you do. You don't know what the Lord knows. So sometimes you, don't not, you might not know what you should be praying for, you know. You then, you know, it says, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself maketh intercision for us with groaning, which cannot be uttered. And that spirit is Yahweh Shai. Okay. It says, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit. Okay. You see, because he maketh intercession, intercision uh, for the saints, which are the Israelites, in this particular, the elect, according to the will of the Most High. All right. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Most High. So all things, you see that, man? This is music, man. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Most High, to them who are called according to his purpose. And that purpose meaning the elect. All right. And uh, I must quote, the Lord said, hate the evil and love the good. So to so the true men and the true uh, elect out there that's of the Lord, that really worship the Lord, the hopeful elect, you know, they abide by, you know, what the Lord precepts say, you know, hate the evil, love the good. So whatever the Lord hate, we hate. Whatever the Lord love, we love. You know, it's not that, you know, I'm thinking of uh, <laughs> General Johanna. Uh, we don't hate white people. God hate white people. <laughs> you know? Oh, man. Hey, we do too. Shit. All right? The Lord Most High uh, uh, says he hates as well. He said he hated Esau and loved Jacob. You know? And that's just the reality of things. You know, as this society goes on, it's uh, forcing men, and I'm going to say, you know, Israelite men, you know, masculine Jake, you know, to be more feminized, man, you know, in their speech, you know, hoping, you know, they're striving to say the things that make everybody feel good. The Lord is not here to make everybody feel good. This is a wicked society. This is a wicked world we're living in under Esau, you know, you know, and you can't support wickedness, man, and nor could you justify it. So anyway, it's my last precept. This is Matthews 21, 21. Yahweh Shah answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig trees, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. So, you know, having faith, you know, someone could say they have faith. But we're coming into that time where the Lord is going to test your faith, you know, and ultimately it's going to be through, through, through um, these uh, darkest hours that's approaching, which the Bible calls Jacob's trouble, you know, you know, being forced to take a RFID microchip, 
which the Bible calls it the mark of the beast. It's going to be a test. You know, the Lord said that um, his elect, he will, um, he will, uh, ex uh, damn, I got to get it. I forgot how it's called. I don't want to mess it up. This is uh, Revelations 3 and 10. It says, behold, I will make them, nope. Uh, 10, yeah, 10. It says, uh, Revelation 3 and 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. Now, the hour of temptation is the time when Esau is going to force the mark of the beast, you know, and it's looking like it, it could happen this year, you know, because they're pushing these pestilences, you know, this uh, disease, the coronavirus, the bird flu, and many other diseases that's emerging, you know, look at China. I think they said it was 700 and something million people quarantine, you know, and um, I watched the elders, uh, Elder Manatazak's lesson as well, and he brought up an article where um, I believe China is burning their own money because it's being passed on through the money. So this is a real crisis that's going on in the world, you know, this is, uh, this is, this is happening, you know, it's happening and it's Bible prophecy. This is what the Lord spoke about. All right, so it says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, all right? Not just America, but all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. So what is it that we have to hold on to? That's this truth. And I'm gonna say the 100% truth, not just the truth, because there's a lot of celebrities that know of the truth, but I don't mean they in the truth or supporting the truth. You know, you can know this truth. You can know, oh, these are the Israelites. Oh, yeah, I knew that. But if you're not supporting this truth, you know, not giving any um, works, you know, in behalf of Yahweh Shai and building and helping, you know, the Lord uh, deliver his, well, let me say, the Lord uh, keep his men um let me say, for bettering this ministry of the Lord in the earth, Salakia, you know, then you're not in the truth, man. You know, it's a lot of people that know the truth, but that don't mean they in the truth. That don't mean that they support the truth. You know, so don't be high hills when you hear a celebrity. Oh, we know that he's an Israelite. That don't mean he support the Israelites. That don't mean he's in the, he's in walking his life according to Yahweh Bashem Yahushua neither. So it says, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I, I come quickly. Hold that fact which thou hast, that no man take thou crown. Now, crown represents salvation because we don't physically have a crown. All right. And that goes into the chapter where uh, uh, in Edris, he saw the vision when Yahweh Shai put the crowns upon the elect's head. He was taller than the rest and he put the crowns upon the men's head. All right. It says, verse 12, him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my power and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my power, Yahweh, and the name of my city, well, in the name of the city of my God, Yahweh, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my power, Yahweh, and I will write upon him my new name. All right, so the Lord is bringing the, bringing the order, he's bringing the heavens here on earth through Yahweh Shai. When Yahweh Shai established everything right, all right, when he come back and he come back as vengeance, you know, he said in Jeremiah, he would not meet thee as a man. Okay, what's that, Jeremiah 47? You know, he said, he would not meet thee as a man. He's going to establish the heavens, okay, the kingdom here on earth as our prayer is prayed to Yahweh, as it said in our prayer to pray to the Heavenly Father. You know, so all these things link up, man. So, you know, I hope this lesson was edifying, you know, kind of scrimmed through it. I have a few precepts. For those that can receive it, he that heareth, let him hear, you know, for who that forbeareth, you know, move on, man. It's not for you. So with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakodash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and others a great millstone. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.